Hey, everybody. Just a quick one. Um, recently, you had some vinyl finds, uh, jazz music. So I'm not going to do a lot of reviewing on these. I'm just going to show you what I got. I have a ton of jazz records to get to. And um, I will be offering some reviews and uh, you know all that. Um, I'm not sure. By the way, I just wanted to say, uh, it, it, do you guys find it weird? Does it kind of blow your mind if uh, I'm talking about vinyl and I've got books in the background instead of most people have like records and stuff? I hope you don't mind that. I hope you can get used to it because that's too bad. It's just the way it is. <laughs> but I'm starting off with a 10 inch. This is Dave Brubeck uh, Quartet or Fantasy. I don't think it's a 78. I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it's a 33 and a third. But the 10 inch is just really an unusual uh, format. Uh, I like it, and I wish I had more. I have one by The Police and some by Rob Zombie. Uh, but this is uh, the first jazz recording I ever got that's on 10 inch, as well as this one, Jazz at Oberlin, by the Dave Brubeck Quartet. And uh, I'm going to, I can't wait to listen to these. I just got these recently. As with this Dave Brubeck, Angel Eyes, uh, Dave, Dave Brubeck's really great at doing standards. I love his style, and I love his integrity. He's just one of the all-time great performers. Uh, can't wait to listen to that one. And, of course, there's the timeless timeout with Take 5, with that unusual uh, uh, timing signature. Uh, I think it's 7-5 or 5-7, I'm not sure. But uh, I also like... Um, Strange Metal Arc and uh, Blue, Blue Rondo uh, a la Turk. Uh, I have like about 3,000 copies of this album. Here's something that brings back a lot of memories. This is Eddie Lockjaw Davis. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember this, but on cable TV there used to be BET. It's the jazz channel. It was just a channel solely dedicated to contemporary, traditional, uh, experimental jazz. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I would just camp out by the TV set and watch every single program that came on there. The first one I ever saw was a live concert by this gentleman. I believe he's a tenor sax, sax player. And uh, there it is. The label is uh, Bethlehem. And I fell in love with, with this man's music. Uh, I think that uh, broadcast came out in 83 or something. And I think he died a year later. But I was so grateful for the Jazz Channel, and I wish they would bring it back. I really do. There's some things in life that you really miss. 1957, we have the poll winners. Uh, Barney Kessel and uh, Shelly Mann and the omnipresent Ray Brown. This is a trio comprised of uh, guitar, drums, and bass. If you like that smooth type of guitar jazz that was reminiscent of the late 50s, uh, this is right up your alley. And man... When I walked into the record store and I saw this thing, <laughs> I saw this thing and I thought, my God, am I dreaming? And I snatched this thing up and it is in, it is in mint condition. Um, West Montgomery, down here on the ground. Uh, something else I'm really looking forward to listening to. I uh, love West Montgomery, great guitarist. Uh, this has uh, Georgia on my mind. Going on to Detroit, say a little prayer for you, which of course is immortalized by um, Aretha Franklin. This is Duke Ellington, Hi-Fi Uptown. Now let me let me let me pose this to you. If I had a dime for every time there was a album cover with a jazz performer smoking a cigarette, I would be a very wealthy man. It just seemed that the, the cigarettes and the the, <laughs> the jazz performer. Were like uh, constant companions. I just, I just, I just find that funny. But of course, the great Duke Ellington. Uh, and I can't say enough good about him. This is Wayne Shorter. Uh, this one here is etc. And the first time I heard Wayne Shorter was on Joni Mitchell's album Mingus, and I think uh, he also performed a little bit on Hajira. I may be wrong about that. But he was playing the soprano sax, so I always thought Wayne Shorter was a soprano saxist. But on this particular record, he's playing the tenor. 
and uh, I can't wait to hear this this one because I love Wayne Shorter. Uh, great musician. I also got this one. Uh, this is uh, uh, Night Dreamer. I had never heard of this record. But uh, once again, he's playing the tenor sax on that. Like I said, these are uh, halls, so a lot of these I haven't had a chance to listen to. But this uh, the fellow right here, they call him the giant. This is Dexter Gordon, another tenor saxist. He has a distinction that no other jazz performer has. And I think back in 1983 or something like that, he was in a motion picture called Round Midnight, uh, which was uh, about an uh, American jazz musician living in France who was dealing with issues uh, and how a, French, a kindly Frenchman and his daughter took him in and took care of him and nursed him back to health and made him uh, perform great again. It was a very, very touching film. But the distinction he has is that he was nominated for Best Actor. Um, and he was, he was great. Uh, there's some scenes in this movie that just bring tears to your eyes. And uh, even Martin Scorsese uh, has a small part in this film. But it's a beautiful film. Uh, this album here is called A Day in Copenhagen. Of course, that's in Denmark. For you geography freaks. But uh, Dexter Gordon, great, great, great musician. I have no idea who this gentleman is. This is the first I've heard of him, uh, Curtis Counts. And uh, I'm going to probably play this one first because I like uh, to discover new artists. I've heard pretty much the, the, uh, the biggest body of work. That didn't make any sense at all. I, this, the performers I just showed you, I've, I've heard, of course, a lot of their work. But I've never heard of this guy, uh, bass player. Uh, I haven't heard of many of the musicians that are on this album. But... I'm anxious. I always love discovering new talent. And, you know, there's just so many, so many albums out there in the jazz, jazz genre to discover. Not just those stuff that's new. I think this one came out in the 80s or something, but it's on contemporary records. Well, I apologize for not being able to say too much as uh, to edify you about anything. Uh, but, uh, like I said, I'm pretty excited about this, this haul. And uh, if any of you have heard some of these albums or, you know, have some comments to make about it, or if you have suggestions about some records I, I would enjoy listening to, I'm glad to hear them. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Love you all. Goodbye.